Well, hello everyone. My name is Donald Sadaway, and I'll be the moderator of this uh, panel. The topic of discussion is uh, incrementalism giving way to transformation. The era of incremental change is over. That transformation, what, what transformations are needed to, uh, to be implemented in mining by 2030? And so uh, we've got a fantastic panel here. First on my immediate left is His Excellency Saleh Al Jasser, who is the Minister of Transportation and Logistics Services. And then next to him is uh, uh, His Excellency Osama Al Zamo, who is the uh, Vice Minister for Industry Affairs. So we are honored to have two distinguished members of the Saudi government with us. And then up on the screens, we have uh, Ivan Ariaga. Ariaga, he's a, a CEO of Antofagasta, joining us remotely. And then also George Fang, who is executive vice chairman of uh, Huayu Cobalt. Gentlemen, welcome. So um, this is going Thank to be you. fast. We only have uh, 40 minutes to, to jump through all of the, uh, the topics. Um, and so it'll be a bit of a lightning round, but uh, I would be really interested in hearing some of your comments on the fine structure associated with what is needed in technological innovation. And so for the first uh, panelist on my left, uh, I would want to hear what his uh, opinions are about innovation that can occur in logistics. Well, uh, thank you very much. Actually, the whole country is in transformation. And uh, for that, logistics and transportation sector have to uh, enable all this transformation. We have to enable transformation in industry, in mining, in tourism, and every other uh, sector in the, in, the, in the kingdom. And uh, with uh, respect to mining, I think we've been working together for a long time. And the great news that we currently enjoy a very strong infrastructure in Saudi Arabia when it comes to ports, railway, roads, uh, Saudi uh, uh, enjoy the, uh, in terms of road connectivity, we rank number one in the world. Um, when it comes to uh, ports, um, we have ample capacity in our uh, ports. Uh, our ports have been ranked by the World Bank um, the, uh, on top of the list when it comes to uh, uh, handling uh, 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 TAUs, uh, uh, King Abdullah economic uh, city port was ranked number one, um, Jeddah Islamic port was ranked number eight globally, moving ahead in one year from uh, 53 to number eight, King Abdul Aziz port have moved from 98 to 14. Uh, all of this because of the uh, uh, reforms that have taken place, regulatory reforms, infrastructure reforms, collaborations with other improving connectivities uh, in our port. Also, when we built uh, the national transportation and logistic uh, strategy which was launched middle of 2021 by His Royal Highness, uh, the Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman, we made sure building that, that it cater for all the plans of the other sectors, including the mining sector. For example, you know, uh, one of the game changer projects in the uh, uh, national transportation and logistics strategy is a railway that connects east to west. And this will uh, be a major enabler uh, to uh, uh, the uh, mining sector. 
we already have uh, a, a major rail system, 1,500 kilometers line that was built uh, primarily to support the uh, mining industry, which is the north uh, uh, rail uh, system. And just recently, a couple of months ago, we have uh, connected that line with two more ports. It was already connected to Ras Al Khair port, but we have added actually three ports, Jubail uh, Commercial, Jubail Industrial Port, and King Abdul Aziz Port. So we have added more uh, enab enablement to uh, the mining sector. Road network is already uh, you know, very well uh, built, it can support all the expansion uh, that uh, the mining sector is aspiring to, uh, to achieve. Um, so I'm, I'm very confident that today and more so in the future, that transport and logistic is a competitive edge actually for the mining industry in Saudi Arabia. That's Well, thank you very much for those comments. Uh, let me turn to your junior colleague, uh, His Excellency Osama Al-Zamil. And um, I know that one topic that's particularly uh, of interest to you in this regard is transformative partnerships uh, that uh, can maximize social benefit. Uh, would you care to comment on that one, please? Thank you, Don. Uh, good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen. It's really a pleasure to be here. Yes, actually, I'm, I'm uh, looking at that uh, really uh, uh, a potential of a bright future in the mining, uh, where it can really tra transform, transform, transform the social benefit of Saudi Arabia uh, in, in really exploiting $1.3 trillion worth of mineral resources in Saudi Arabia, which means that for us, it's a big, big potential that we can have a social impact in Saudi Arabia in all region. We are, uh, we are really a continent, Saudi Arabia by itself, and as his Excellency mentioned, Engineer uh, Saleh, that with all of this uh, capabilities of logistic infrastructure, with the whole infrastructure in terms of uh, industry and manufacturing, uh, and also infrastructure in many aspects of life, that means that there is a big potential for us to exploit those uh, 1.3 trillion uh, U.S. dollar of uh, uh, mineral resources. I will emphasize more on the micro, the macro trends actually, that's affecting the mining industry, which is uh, one of them is focusing on people and environment, which is very important that industry. And second, the macro challenges of how, uh, how much we are facing. I mean, uh, how we have a large U.S. population, and we that we need to create jobs for them. And this actually will be exploited by re real planning, real planning and working in synergy with our colleagues in the government and uh, uh, working through implementation of strategies. And one of the biggest uh, strategies that's been now uh, uh, launched by His Royal Highness uh, Crown Prince last year was uh, the National Industrial Strategy, which will work hand in hand with the National mining strategy on exploiting those uh, 1.3 trillion dollar of, of uh, mineral resources uh, that are available in our country. This is also will be led by public-private partnership, which will work in many aspects in the country to uh, play a huge, a huge part of the future uh, plans for the kingdom. Also, uh, the national industrial strategy will work to promote industry and attract investment from partners in the kingdom, uh, leading uh, the economic diversification and growth of non-oil export and GDP, part of the country's Vision 2030 uh, plans. We are considered the third pillar of uh, the Vision uh, 2030 with its manufacturing capabilities and the mining capabilities. It is, will be vital for the future of the industry, uh, uh, the mineral resources, as it will uh, create a, a double 
and uh, job numbers with tens of thousands quality jobs, high value jobs, and will track mega investment of 350 billion US dollar. Actually, our strategy is already working. Last year, uh, Saudi Arabia registered 14% increase in new jobs during the third quarter of 2022 in that sector, brought on by growth in sectors including manufacturing, sales, marketing, and investment. A new report has, uh, as a new report has revealed, and actually, actually we are looking for more jobs to create in the non-oil sector uh, uh, increase in December at the highest pace since January 2018. Actually, I want a small example in this. We aim to increase the number of factories in the kingdom from 10,500 at present to 36,000 by 2035. Again, very impressive. And um, I, uh, I thank both of you for bringing us with this uh, precious information. I want to now turn to the people that are on the screens, uh, George and Ivan. And so uh, feel free to comment on what you've just heard, but also to go into the more technological aspects of what transformations are needed. So in no particular order, I see George closer to me. So please, your comments. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dan. And uh, thank you very much for the two uh, uh, excellency ministers give us very good presentation and a speech. We learned a lot from uh, your country. So, uh, yes, we fully agree with you. The world is changing. The world is transforming. And uh, there is a revolution is going on. What the revolution is, is an energy revolution. We're transforming from the uh, oil and gas core, that kind of force energy to renewable clean energy. So a lot of things is going on related to, to energy transforming, we call it energy revolution. As you know, while you cobalt, we are new energy battery, leasing battery material producer. We're working in the uh, new energy battery material supply chain. We produced Castle material and precursor material with our own supply chain. That own supply chain built with uh, from mining operation, mining, processing, and smelting. And also from another kind of mining, as uh, we call the battery, used battery recycling. We call this another work for uh, mining business in the city. So current mining business is uh, based on the background of new energy revolution. It's totally fundamentally transformed with what we did 10 or 20 years ago. Nowadays, when Huayo Cobalt set up our own supply chain in Indonesia about nickel and cobalt, in Zimbabwe about leasing, in the uh, other African country about cobalt and copper, alas, we pay a lot of attention and also based on the practice, ESG is a top priority. Carbon emission is the things we uh, need tracing the whole supply chain. So that's uh, fundamentally changed with what we did before. Before I joined Huayo Cobalt, I working in Gigi Mining for the copper and gold uh, mining business. We have uh, personally very much honor we pay a pay visit, personally pay visit to Antofagasta in Chile. Today is uh, so much great to see you, sir, from Antofagasta. So, uh, that's, uh, that's, I'm going to stop here. Thank you. Okay, and now may we hear from Ivan. Your yes, comment. well, th thank you very much for, for the invitation and for sharing this uh, panel with such a 
distinguished uh, guests, uh, you know, from the kingdom and, and, and George. I would maybe just like to, to start by saying that I think what the kingdom is doing in terms of seeing mining as a great opportunity, it's outstanding. I think it's a, it's a great example of a combination of political will, vision, and, and then putting together enabling conditions as uh, have been, for example, explained on logistics, on partnerships, to be able to take the opportunity of uh, mining uh, and, uh, and realize you know, the, the, the value and the benefit for uh, you know, the, the, the country and the wider uh, world. So I just want to stress that I think it's, a, it's an outstanding example. Now, let, let me talk a bit about copper. Uh, copper is critical uh, to the support of the uh, transition economy. Um, and uh, today, uh, the copper market has a size of around 25 million ton and just tons. And just to give you a, um, an example of, of the challenges that we have ahead, uh, you know, the, the, the expected increase in demand from between now and 2030 is that an additional, you know, five to six million tons of copper are going to be required, uh, as you know, transition mineral, mostly to be placed in electromobility and renewable energy. So there's a very significant challenge in terms of being able to grow uh, the production of minerals. Uh, and, and that's basically, you know, one of the key features of the copper market. Now, Mining has a very transformative, therefore, uh, role to play, uh, both in terms of the energy transition, but also in terms of the um, ability that it has to bring to host countries and communities economic benefits, and, and the sort of transformative role that it usually plays as well in supply chain development, bringing employment, opportunities, innovation, and technology. So with that background, positioning mining in that way and, and looking at, at uh, being able to, to address that opportunity. Uh, well, we at Antofagasta are a pure copper, uh, 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 or focus primarily in copper. We have high quality assets, but more importantly, the technology, the resources, and the people to grow. And that's why we're looking at opportunities. And all that it's been done in the kingdom is, looks extremely attractive for us as, uh, as a way of you know, moving ahead with, with our plans. Now, let me stop a little bit around some transformative opportunities that I see more specifically in the way that we do our business, which I think are also relevant for what uh, you know, the kingdom is, uh, is pursuing. And, and I would say, and I would cluster them in three main areas. Uh, first of all, I think there is a great opportunity in terms of permitting and regulatory uh, frameworks. And I think uh, the kingdom is starting to some extent you know, from a uh, 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 a new slate, and, and from that point of view, being able to uh, design uh, permitting, which is transformative in the sense that it's it's predictable, it's transparent, it's it's front and loaded, so that miners and investors know in an early stage if projects are viable uh, for permitting or not, and then that are reliable, that once given, you know, are, we're able to undertake them without, uh, you know, uh, litigation subsequently are, you know, would be very transformative. That in of itself would be a key enabler to be able to undertake uh, mining and then, you know, grasp the opportunity that there is in terms of growth in mining. So transformative permitting and, and a regulatory framework that is underpinned by the political will and the vision that has been expressed, you know, by the kingdom, I think is a tremendous opportunity to transform mining and grasp that opportunity. Second, I would say in, in the use of critical resources for mining, and this is more specific than uh, for mining processes, but I think certainly one of the key opportunities that we see in mining, which is happening, is the use of renewable energy uh, you know, for mining processes. And, and from that point of view, I think uh, you know, the, the, the availability of renewable energy, be it you know, solar, or, or, or hydrogen or green uh, hydrogen, you know, in the future, uh, you know, I think are interesting features uh, to, to consider. Uh, you know, in the case of Antofagasta, we've got our operations are primarily in Chile, and therefore we're able now to mine uh, and use in our operations essentially uh, renewable energy, uh, you know, so all our electricity is sourced from renewable energy. So I think that's an opportunity uh, to position uh, you know the uh, the mining uh, which is uh, is valuable. The other one is 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 water. Uh, mining does use water in its processes, and I think uh, 
um, it, to the extent that there are areas because of the changes that are taking place, which, which are becoming more stressed in terms of water availability, the ability to provide water from sea uh, facilities uh, through desalination uh, or, or simply salinated water. I think it's another opportunity of, right. of the kind of transformations that we're seeing in the mining world, which sort of highlight how the mining uh, in the future is going to be performed, going to be done. Uh, so I think energy and water as key inputs to mining processes uh, migrating to renewable and seawater in, in, in water stressed areas are key transformations that I see in, in mining. And then lastly, uh, I, I wouldn't want to uh, not mention that um, the transformation opportunity that I see in the workforce uh, for you know, the digital age and the challenges that we're facing uh, you know, in, in the future. Mining is becoming much more digital in the way that it is performed. We have uh, much more remote operating centers. Autonomy is also you know, becoming a key feature in mining and, and remote operations. And therefore, uh, being able to integrate you know, digital competencies and capabilities into uh, the workforce um, for a modern uh, mining economy, I think it's, it's critical. And in that space, obviously, I think uh, you know, the, the drive for diversity in the workforce is also something which is uh, is very important. So, the change in the workforce for um, uh, preparing for a digital age and being able to work on that as well, I think, are key features in in mining. So, in summary, I would say, you know, transformation opportunities first in permitting and regulatory uh, environment, which I think the kingdom has a tremendous opportunity to undertake and is looking at it, I think, in the right way. And then in terms of use of critical resources, water and energy, another opportunity that we're seeing the mining uh, uh, grasping. And then finally, um, the workforce for the digital age. Uh, I think, uh, you know, being able to train and develop competencies on uh, digital, I think, a key. So that's uh, the, the perspective I wanted to, to provide. But, but again, I want to stress that I think uh, I, I, I don't, I mean, the, the combination of what we're seeing in terms of vision, political will, and then creating the enabled conditions in the kingdom for mining, uh, for the mining opportunity, it's outstanding. And I really uh, want to uh, celebrate and recognize that effort, because I think it's, um, it's a great example of how things can be done. Thank you. Well, thank you for your comments, and uh, thank you especially for uh, making reference to what's going on here in, in the kingdom. And uh, with that, I would like to have a second round and, and begin with uh, His Excellency to ask if you would like to return to some of the comments by Ivan with respect to the changes that have been taking place here and how they are uh, impetus to accelerate the transformation. Any comments? Well. Uh you know, it, uh, as I mentioned, transformation is taking place in everything uh, we do and adapting new technology, uh, protecting the environment and also keeping uh, an ongoing channels of coordination with the other sectors to make sure that we live up to uh, the promise of enabling all uh, the sectors. And uh, um, I explained how we work together in building our national strategies, where our national, strate national transportation and logistics strategy was built in coordination with everyone. The same for the mining industry uh, uh, strategy when it was built, or the in, uh, industry strategy when it was built. It was built in coordination with everyone. But coordination doesn't stop there. We have also other forms of continued uh, uh, coordination and collaboration. For example, when it comes to industry, mining, energy, and transportation, we are partners together in NEDLIB program, which is one of the most important vision programs to enable those sectors, where we work together to align on our initiatives and also coordinate on funding those initiatives and to make sure that everything we do is coordinated and coherent. Thank you. Uh, comment? <clears throat> well, if I will comment is uh, maybe in one in two aspects. First is about human capital development. 
this sector is relatively new, and now the maturity level going up and rising, especially with such forum that we are gathering the, the, the highest intellectual in the world coming together, bringing, uplifting our local talents to understand what does it mean about uh, mining, not in, uh, what is currently happening, but also in the future. And as we had in this forum about smart mining, it was really brought with different uh, entities from, the, from uh, academia, from other uh, entrepreneurs, that this also will give a lot of potential for our entrepreneurs uh, to go and grab the opportunity in the mining industry and also in, our, uh, in, in the manufacturing also sector. That's why I think we are now in a very uh, golden uh, era uh, to capitalize on going forward. We have done it before. We have done it in the petrochemical industry, for example, and we had very mature uh, uh, experience in that area, which also have benefited also uh, from it in the mining industry uh, that we're looking at this, and uh, looking at this in the, in, the, in, the, in the petrochemical industry and other manufacturing industry. But I think with the my, my, uh, mineral resources, manufacturing capabilities are coming in big time. And I just want to mention one example that maybe Don is your experience with it, which is the AV battery metal plants. For example, they're targeting about 2 billion US dollars, which is this related to the midstream uh, pipeline of projects that uh, by itself we bring capabilities on that, even those kind of projects we are talking about around 32 billion US dollars of nine projects that we uh, looking forward on that kind of development. This all capabilities need to have a human capital uh, development. So in short, the ministry, as we are the Ministry of Industry and Mineral Resources, so we are, we are in one house, in the industry and in the, the mineral resources, we are actually follows the directive of His Royal Highness, the Crown Prince, who said, we have all the capabilities. We need to enable a competitive and sustainable industry economy from ambitious young talent and distinguished geographic location, rich natural resources, and the presence of leading national industrial uh, companies. Through the national industry strategy and in partnership with the private sector, the kingdom will become a leading industrial power that contributes to securing global supply chains and exporting high-tech products to the world. As moderator, I'm not going to comment, but I do want to pick up on something that Ivan said that I think merits a comment from you, where he talked about the diversity and uh, about opening the doors to the broader swath of the populace. And one of the things that has impressed me over the last uh, 24 hours is how much I've learned about the bringing of women into the workforce. And uh, would either of you care to comment on how, how, how did you come to this to uh, recognize you have this font of talent and it would be uh, a shame not to exploit that talent and let it release its uh, creative abilities? Yeah, well, uh, enablement of women and young in general has been, you know, uh, very obvious uh, in the last few years. Uh, uh, the number of hires from uh, women uh, probably exceed 50% in most of the uh, sectors today to uh, catch up uh, with the uh, total uh, numbers. So we actually have already achieved our aspirations for 2030 when it comes to uh, uh, the percentage of uh, 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 women uh, employment in the sector. So just to uh, uh, put numbers here, which is excellent you just mentioned, actually the Vision 2030 numbers is 35% of the workforce to be composed of women by 2030. Today, that figure stands at 37%. So we have achieved it earlier. Well, if you keep going ahead of schedule, 
You don't need the 2030. You yeah. can make it exactly. 2025. You're exactly. moving very, very quickly. Right. George, would you like to chime in here, please? Thank you. So uh, I would like to uh, talk about two points to uh, follow uh, the discussions you, ha you have in the stage. So first one is uh, we say uh, nowadays uh, the business model is transforming. Why we say that way? So, for example, in bio cobalt, in related new energy battery and EV industries, there are two different things happen for the transforming of mining business. One is uh, each company, whatever is Tesla, whatever is uh, Ford, Volkswagen, or with our partner with. Uh, Posco LG, so and uh, even uh, our Japanese friends working together, each guys not only to uh, build our their own supply chain from the mining business, but also we do another very important thing is to build industry ecology. Not only we pay a lot of attention to our own business to our own company but also we're working together with partners. For example, Hua Yu, we're working together with PTVI, we're working together with Antam, we're working together with some mining companies. One day we're working together with Antafagas, that we hope so, in the kingdom. So, and uh, in the upstream, in the downstream, we're working together with battery producer, CLTL, LG Cam, and LG Energy Solution, and even the uh, OEM, the E-Way makers, and the, and the battery for the storage. We're working together. Why are we working together? That's because we want to uh, think about a, a right, the harmony industry ecology. Not only to develop a better business for ourselves, but also the whole industry chain, the value chain, the ecology getting better and uh, getting more high standard ESG, getting more attention to the carbon emission, think about the, the uh, 2030 and 2060 for the carbon neutralization and the carbon zero carbon emission. So that one get a high quality growth and a better life for the world, for the whole human being. So that's the really transformation for the mining business. So why are you? Uh, it's uh, listed in Shanghai Stock Exchange. Our nowadays the market cap is not 100, 100 billion RMB. So just so around 15 or 16 billion uh, US dollars. But we are in the process trying to catch up with the uh, new energy revolution, trying to play an important role in the e-way supply chain and trying to make, make a contribution for the industry ecology in the EV industry and the battery, new energy industry. That's one transformation. Another one is uh, in terms of what localization. When we do the business, uh, you know, Huayu is a global company. We do business globally. So uh, we do the, in the working force, as you mentioned, how much the women will be uh, in the working force. Nowadays, Huayu have 30,000 employees working globally. Uh, the exact number will be changed. Somewhere between 30 to 40% is uh, women. That's because we, we, we are doing the, the special business in the uh, energy uh, material production side. Let's meet various, various employees have a different skill set and also pay a lot of attention to localization. The local people, for example, in Indonesia, we got around 20,000 people. That's local people is around 80 to 90% of various for different operations. And even in Zimbabwe, we got a localization is uh, around, still around 80, 80 to 90, and pay a lot of attention to the women work uh, labor force. Not, not only training, but also uh, education, and also uh, uh, get pay a lot of attention to uh, 
working in the company and life in the society. So that's the second <coughs> transformation in our business. So I uh, stop here. Thank you. Thank you. And I'm going to turn to Yvonne for the last comment, and then we will be out yeah, of so, time. So Yvonne, please, your last comment. Yes, OK. So just, just a very few points. One, I really uh, celebrate the progress that has been noted on uh, the workforce uh, diversity and, and being ahead of, of you know, your own aspiration is just uh, you know, very good news. A uh, uh, second uh, point I would make, which I find extremely interesting, which has been mentioned, is the ability that um, the kingdom might have to integrate uh, mining with industry manufacturing and therefore with some uh, you know, uh, uh, downstream uh, manufacturing. And I think uh, when that is designed in a way and it's done in a way which is rooted in uh, true competitiveness, because, you know, there is, uh, say, you know, a competitive advantage in the supply of, of energy or on logistics, you know, because of, you know, where, you know, the, uh, the you know, the geography is located. I think that is, is absolutely great. And I think that's an opportunity that certainly um, we look to understand more, but integrating mining into industry manufacturing, which, uh, you know, is, is one of the aims uh, as stated by the kingdom. I think it's it's also something which is very interesting. And and then I just, just finalize by saying, I think, uh, uh, there's again, and I'll, I'll say it again, I think there's a great opportunity from a permitting and uh, regulatory framework uh, point of view, uh, starting from, you know, a clean slate to really develop something which is uh, for mining, uh, as I say, predictable, transparent, reliable, and is, is front ended. And I think that can be a tremendous competitive advantage for attracting uh, mining and, and, and really going after the opportunity that mining presents. So um, thanks for that. And, I, and I, it's been really a pleasure being able to share with the, with the colleagues in the panel. Thank you. Well, with this, I think uh, this is a good place to, uh, to pause. I, I'm always happy to end early, never be the one that runs over time. And uh, everybody stayed to topic. I thought it was very, very informative and some very pleasant surprises in the observations. Thanks to the two excellencies here and to the two gentlemen that are visiting us via uh, video link. And uh, so I invite the audience to show your appreciation. Thank you.